Your love is to fulfill God's laws. Right, right. All right? So give me the book of Leviticus 19, verse 17. Right? So if we don't have love towards one another, what are we going to be doing? What you see in our communities today. Right? right. Because there's something you weren't doing. Right? right? But you're up here now. Right. right, so what is it that we're show if we show hatred, what does that mean? If we have hatred towards our people, what are we not gonna do? We're not gonna love them. We're not gonna love them, and what is love? Love is justice. It's to fulfill God's laws. Yeah, Alright, right, so read that for this brother, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. The book you of Leviticus. Like your people, you hate them, read. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Read. Thou should not hate thy brother. No, I'm not gonna hate you, brother. And the way that I need to show you that I don't hate you is what? Read. In thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So I'm going to come out here, cry aloud, and lift up my voice and show my people their transgressions to warn you that you're in the midst of sin. Read that again from the top. Slow. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So don't take anything that we're bringing forth as hatred, brother, because this is love. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. All right, so... We're going to answer what you're dealing with, but I want you to remember. But for, like, let me ask you this really quick. What is sin? Okay. Sin is the transgression of your thought. It doesn't have to be a physical thing. You can just think it. If a woman walks by and you go, ah, oh, she got a nice body. All right. If you commit adultery, mm -hmm. if you balance, if you strike. All right. It could be any number of things. All right, but so let's, let's stop there. From the here. mind, right? So let's yeah. stop right there, right? So you said, but you never explained to me what is sin. We're going to address that. Oh, because okay. everything that you were bringing forth uh -huh. is scriptural. But first, I asked you, what is sin? Okay. How would you explain that to your brothers in the street, right? To show them love, okay. you have to show them that they're in the midst of sin. Right. So how would you be able to do that? What is sin? By my example. First, I would show them by Give my me. example. Now, first what is sin? You're asking me what is sin? Yes. Give me a chance to answer. You keep like regulating off. Um, sin is an act of Hi. any kind of malice, which I mean by that is my wrongful thinking or wrongful action. All right, so look, we're going to stay there, right? So you always go, you harken back to the mind. Yeah. You're like, all right, sin always starts in the mind, and you're yeah. right. But first, we're going to get the definition of sin. That's what I wanted to okay, know, brother. Okay. A simple answer, okay. right? Okay. Read that. The book of 1 John, if chapter 3 and verse 4. Stop commanding. Go ahead. Read that again from the top. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin. Right? So now we're going to learn the definition. Whosoever committed sin. That's God's people, read. Transgressive, also the law. So this always is going back to the law. Sin is breaking God's laws. What you were talking about is one of God's laws. And we're going to address that. But continue. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of God's laws. So give me the book of... Uh, let me get Mark chapter 7, verse 21. So what you were saying was, sin always starts in the mind. The transgression of God's laws starts here first, right? Before you can do an action, right? You have to think about it, right? So let's premeditate it. You have to premeditate a breaking of God's laws before you can do it. So let's see how you, what Christ is talking about when he refers to what you brought forth. The book, here is in the scripture what you were talking about. Read that. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Fall from within, out of the heart of men. All right, so first, Christ says, fall from within, out of the hearts of men. So let me ask you really quick, what is your heart? Uh, it's kind of hard to... All right, how about this? Give me one sentence. What is the heart? My heart is good. So you point, wait, wait, hold on, oh, hold on. What is physical heart? No, no, no. What is the heart that the God talks about? Because oh. you're, you're going off of the understanding of this world. It's to love thy name. It's to love. No. Let's let's see what Christ says about the heart. Because just like everybody else does, you always they always point to their chest, right? When I'm talking about love, I somehow, symbolically, when I point to my chest, that's addressing what love is. But that's not what God says love is. Read that for me. The book of Mark, chapter 7, and verse 21. Fall from within, out of the heart of men. So out of your heart, what is that? Read. Perceive evil thoughts. So where do the thoughts come from? 
heart. Where did your thoughts come from? Your mind. Your mind, right? Yes. So God is letting your you hold on, bro. Too. Yeah, so God is letting you know your heart is what? Your mind. Right. Because you're pumping your chest that circulates all the blood through your body. Is that producing thoughts? No. Is it producing thoughts? No. no. So read. Read. Evil thoughts. Adulteries. All right. So adulteries like you brought forth come from your mind. You have to premeditate that before you do it. Read. Fornication. All right. Making whores out of your brothers and sisters. All right. That's having these boyfriend and girlfriend relationships and not getting married. Right. You have to premeditate that. Read. Murders. Right. You have to premeditate murder no matter what you do. Read. Deaths. Right. To steal something you have to premeditate it. Covetousness. You have to premeditate that. I want that. So I don't, it doesn't matter how I get it, but I need it. Read. Wickedness. Wickedness. All types of evils have to be pre premeditated in your mind. Read. Deceit. Deceit. Lying to your brothers. Deceiving them with your actions. That pre That's premeditated in your mind. Read. Right. Lasciviousness. So lascivious behavior. Lewd sexual behavior. Right. right? That's premeditated in your mind. To be a sodomite. Right? That's premeditated in your mind. Read. An evil eye, an evil eye having hatred towards your brother. Right. Me not correcting you according to God's laws. That's me having hatred towards you. I have to think about that. Read. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Me knowing the truth and walking away from it. Me knowing the truth and then going into Christianity. Because Christianity has nothing to do with what the Bible says. What God tells us to do. Read. Pride. Pride. That has to be premeditated. Read. Foolishness. Foolishness has to be premeditated. Read. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. So all these things come from your mind and defile you. So give me the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. All right, give me 4. All right, so Paul goes into this aspect. So now that we're out here, now that we know that our mind defiles us, the the, 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 the devices, the imagery, uh, the, uh, the thoughts that proceed out of our minds are the things that defile us. What do we need to do as a people? All right, read that. Well, the book of, we need to repent and be baptized. What is the baptism? Okay, the baptism, uh, when Joshua met John at the Jordan, he showed you that through example of the baptism, it's, it's like when Nicodemus asked Yahshua about how can I be born again. Right. The only way a spirit can be born again is it has to go back to water. So you didn't... That's why you're born through water. All right. So first off, brother, you didn't really explain it that well. You went from one story, or you went from one historical description in the Bible to another one. So we're gonna get you to clear understanding all that, because okay. we know the God's words. We study these words. Okay. Uh, you obviously don't. Mind but let's help you. Let's guide you. Your mind, right? Because your it's mind is the things. Three, five, oh, brother, we're gonna go into the baptism. We're gonna go into repentance with you. All you have to do is have patience with us. All right, brother. All right. All right. So if you have patience, yes. all right, let's read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 10 and verse 4. For the weapon of our warfare. So no, brother, we're at war in this land. The Israelites are at war, but what is this war? The weapons of our warfare is what? Are not carnal. So the weapons that we have to fight the evils in this land is spiritual, right? These carnal weapons aren't going to save you, read. But mighty through, the, through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Your thought process is a stronghold. The words of God are going to pull those down. Christianity is a stronghold. The words of God are going to pull these things down. Muslims, Islam, my people being that nonsense, is a stronghold. The word of God is going to cast it down. Read. Casting down imaginations. Right, because those things are imaginations and the hearts of men are evil. Read. And every high thing that exceeded itself against the knowledge of God. So when you lift up your own wisdom over God, knowing that your wisdom is not wisdom at all because it lacks knowledge, right? But Mosai says he's going to cast that down with his wisdom, his words, read. And bring it into captivity. Bring those thoughts, those imaginations into captivity, read. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought is going to be brought into the obedience of Christ. You're either going to hear this word and start doing what God says, or you're going to walk down the street and die when he returns. Yes. But let's go to 
what baptism is, right? And then we're going to go into repentance. So give me the book of John, uh, the book of Matthews. All right, go to, give me chapter three. Let's see. You went into John the Baptist. So let's see what John the Baptist was doing. But huh? You read Mark 16, 16 for me. All right. So let's get Mark 16, 16 first. Right. Let's see what this brother wants us to read. All right. You got that, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16. Read. All right on the other side. Yep. Read that for the book of Mark, chapter 16 and verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Right. So let's learn what it means to believe and let's learn what baptism is. So give me the book of Sirach. Give me, what is it, 32 verse 24? Yes, sir. All right, so let's get, let's get what it means to believe first. What does it mean to believe? It, it means you have faith. To believe is faith, like a mustard seed. It's like how the mustard seed is so small, but yet when it grows, it's mighty like this. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 24. He, but he that believeth in the Lord. So he that believeth, right? It said believe and be baptized. So remember this, brother. He that believeth, you that believeth, right? What must you be doing, Reed? Taking heed to the commandment. The commandments again. Love is the keeping of God's laws. To believe is the keeping of God's laws. Read that again from the top. The book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 24. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. So if you believe in God, you are going to do his commandments. Read. And he that trusteth in him shall fear never the worse. You're going to fear never the worse. Because when you're keeping God's laws, you know that everything is going to go well. Our God's going to fight for you when you're keeping his laws. Now it's at baptism. What is baptism? Uh, Ephesians 5 verse 26. So what? We were learning that what Christ said, right? He said that you need to be believe and be baptized, right? But a lot of our people have a misunderstanding of what baptism is. John the Baptist said he was baptized. It said he was baptizing in the wilderness, but he said that ministry he was doing had to end so Christ could do his baptism. But it wasn't of water. What was it? The book of Ephesians, chapter five and verse twenty-six. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. So sanctify and cleanse you, all people, read. With the washing of water by the word. The washing of water by the word. So the word of God is what cleans you. All right, so this is baptism. We went over what believe is, but now we're still going into baptism. All right. All right, give me Matthew chapter 3, start at verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, in verse 3. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, all right, saying, the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. So stop, let's start at verse 1. Let's start from the beginning of this chapter. Right, precept upon precept, line upon line. Let's get the understanding of what's going on here. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, in verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. So he was preaching what? The word of God, right? Read. And say, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, right? Repent, because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We're going to go into what repentance is, but read. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, mm -hmm. saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. So the prophecy that was written about John the Baptist coming and doing what he did now, all right, this was prophesied back in Isaiah, read. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Right? So he's preparing the way of Christ. Read. Make his path straight. Right? So tell these people that, hey, repent, because the kingdom is at hand. Read. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair. Read. And a, a leather girdle. Read. About his loins. And his meat was locust and wild honey. All right. Read. Because he was a Nazarite. Remember that as well. Read. Then went out to him Jerusalem. And all Judea. All right, so the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans came out of John the Baptist to hear what? His, him preaching God's words and to repent, read. And all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan. Right, so he was doing the water baptism at this time, but read. Confessing their sins. But they all confessed their sins. They all admitted to their iniquities, the laws of God that they were breaking, read. 
But when he saw many of the of the Pharisees, all right, so the Pharisees, that would be your, your Christian pastors today. Right? Because they're not teaching you according to God's laws. They're teaching you philosophies. They're teaching you lies. They're teaching you to the traditions of men. Right? They're not teaching you after the ways of God, read. And Sadducees come to his baptism. Alright, so let's start from uh Give me verse 11. So we're going to jump down to verse 11. Let's see what he says about his baptism. All right, read. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. So he admits, I did baptize you unto water to repentance, but it's symbolic for something. Read. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Right, so Christ came after John the Baptist. This is the way that he was preparing. Read. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. So that baptism doesn't even compare to what Christ is going to be bringing. The word of God. Read. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The law. Read. And with fire. Right? So that's that, tri uh, that tribulation. So baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So give me the Holy Ghost. All right, and then go back to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 because this rounds what baptism is because John the Baptist said the dipping of you in water right that's going to go away because when Christ comes he's going to be baptizing you in the Holy Ghost what is the Holy Ghost the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51 verse 51 you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. So our brothers, our sisters, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are stiff neck in your mind and in your ears because you don't want to think upon your actions and correct yourself according to the Word of God. You don't want to listen to the Word of God to get you to think about your actions to correct you against the Word of God. Read. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. You resist the Holy Ghost. Our people resist the laws even today. They resist God's laws. A lot of them say they love God, but they ain't doing any of God's laws. Right? Read. As your fathers did, so do ye. Just like our forefathers did. Right? We're doing the same thing our forefathers did. We're resisting the Holy Ghost. We don't want to do God's laws. That's why we're in the conditions that we're in today. Read. Verse 52. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? So which one of God's prophets that he sent for to go out to our people to get them to repent and come back to God's laws having our people persecuted? Right? They make mockery of them. Right? They're in derision to God's laws. Right? So read. And they have slain them which shrewd before of the coming of the just one. So they even killed the prophets when they were bringing forth God's laws to get our people to come back and repent. Read. Of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Right? Because this is going into Christ. Because they killed the Messiah. Our people killed the Messiah, read. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels. So the Holy Ghost is the law again. Everything about this Bible is about the nation of Israel coming back to God's laws. Yes, right. That is what repentance is. Give me the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. All right, so you said repentance, right? So what is repentance? Bring it up. Read the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent, ye therefore, and be converted. Repent and be converted, right? So what does it mean to be converted? Okay, to, change. to change. So let's see what changes us. Repent and be converted. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The what, book? what is it that converts us? Right? And changes us. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The laws of God are perfect. So when the nation of Israel is keeping God's laws, right, we're going to see the perfection of God's laws. When we're not in the midst of adultery, isn't that going to help fix our communities? When we're not in the midst of fornication, boyfriend and girlfriend, babies out of wedlock, isn't that going to fix our communities? When we're not murdering one another, isn't that going to fix our communities? When we're not lying to one another, isn't that going to fix our communities? All of these things are showing you the perfection of God's laws. All right, read. Converting the soul. These things are what change you. Keeping of God's laws is going to change us. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Because everything that God is talking about in the entirety of the Bible is coming to pass. It has come to pass and it will come to pass. Yes. Alright? So give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 47. That is what repentance is. Right? Coming back and keeping God's laws. Now let's see what the prophecy, the testimony of, uh, of the Most High says about God's people in the last days. What are they going to do? Read the book of 1 Kings. Chapter 8 
and verse 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves, so our people are going to be converted. They are going to bethink themselves. They are going to repent, right? And what? And the land, whether they were carried captive. Weren't we carried away captives here? And if you know your history, you would know that our so-called brothers from the northern king, or our brothers from the northern kingdom, the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, they were carried away captive to Europe. Right? It's called a triangle slave trade. Back and forth. Hold your peace, brother. Read. All right. So let's read slowly. Read that again. Verse forty-seven. Yet if ye, yet if they shall bethink themselves. So we're going to think upon our ways and realize we're in opposition to God's laws. Read. In the land, whether they were carried captives. Right, so we're going to think about these things and repent in our land of our captivity. Read. And, and repent and make supplication unto right. thee in the land of them that carried them captives. Right, so we're going to come back to the Most High with a humble and meek spirit. We're not going to be prideful. We're not going to come with our own understanding. We're not going to come with the knowledge that we learn from our oppressors. Read. Saying, we have sinned. And have done perversely. We have broken God's laws, and in the breaking of God's laws, we have done wickedness and evil in this land. Read. We have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul. So this is a testimony that was spoken of in 19 verse 7. This is what God's people are going to do in this land today. That's what we're coming out here to teach you. All right? Read that again. Verse 48. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land. So we're going to pray unto our God towards our land, which is Jerusalem. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.